Listen, guys, something's going on. Bungie is making too many right decisions right now, and it's kind of scaring me. After watching them over the past year, maybe a year and a half, make the decisions they have made over and over, I'm sitting here wondering what the hell is going on. Who is making these common sense decisions? I don't know. I don't know who that, that person may be or maybe collection of persons, but they're just making good common sense decisions. And that's surprising. One of those decisions is the fact that all of the weapons that we were going to be getting after the Into the Light update goes live was going to be stretched out over six weeks. And it's going to be time gated. And that's pretty much Bungie's way. I mean, everything is time gated. The story's time gated. The loot is time gated. The time gates are time gated. That's just part of Bungie's way. But then everybody started complaining. And in the past, Bungie would just read that and they would just carry on. We would still get the six week time gate and that would be it. But then they rolled it back. Now, not completely. It's three weeks instead of six weeks. But the point is, it's common sense decisions that are being made right now. And it's scaring me, fellas. This good stuff that keeps happening right now is scaring me. This is the thing that happens right before everything dies. Now, look, you're probably saying, Cross, you're being dramatic. But you ever had that grandpa that was like, you know, pretty much a dick their whole life. They were just always riding you all the time. And it's suddenly out of nowhere. They're like, hey, you want to go fishing? And then like a week later, they're dead. All I'm saying is, that's what I feel like is happening here with Bungie. They're like, listen, maybe Destiny is about to die in the next year or so. Let's just give them something great. And not that I'm against getting something great, but I'm just saying it's kind of scary to think about. Decision number two that Bungie has done here recently that I know no one's really even thinking about. The fact that they have had live streams. They have had live streams hyping up their content. When was the last time they did a single live stream? You know, outside of... You know, last year when we saw the 1v1 with Joe, which was amazing. And guys, I would quite frankly watch another tournament of that style again. I mean, come on, stack up all the overload champions. Let's see Joe take them all on. But the last time they really sat down and started hyping up something going into an expansion outside of the annual expansion, it feels like years. We used to get like trailers leading up to the season. And then the day the season dropped, there was all this hype that built up. And then for like the past couple of years, though, what has happened is we just get a trailer the day the stuff actually drops. There's like no hype. There's some stuff happening in the TWAB. You know, there's some talk here and there with about sandbox changes that are coming. And perhaps like a podcast interview with one of the developers, which is really, really nice. The fact is, is that Bungie themselves have not been hyping up their own products going into the launch of a season or an expansion for a very long time. Outside of the annual expansion, they haven't been doing that. Now, decision number Three, Bungie is making this entire update that's coming to us next week that has, by the way, a horde mode, which we've asked for for a very long time. They're making it free, which, dude, that's just crazy. I mean, free in Bungie. Those things just don't go together. Like, when was the last time Bungie did anything for free? I think the April update back in the Taken King. I mean, I, I really don't know of any other time. I mean, 30th anniversary events, that was money. You still have to pay for that. And everybody talks very highly of the 30th anniversary event. But just thinking back before that, I don't know of anything else Bungie has done that was for free. And that right there is crazy in itself. Now, the fourth thing, and this is the one that scares me the most. Out of everything that was shown in the live streams and everything that was talked about and everything that we've been going over pretty much for the past three, four weeks, somehow, some way, the impossible has occurred and that's bomb bad by boogeyman making return to destiny 2 this by the way was our third member to the best fire team in a he left after a nightfall one day and if i remember the exact quotes this game is so bad man so bad and then that was it bomb bad literally uninstalled and i don't know what was that a year and a half maybe two years ago and we never saw bomb bad again but somehow some way into the light and the decisions that bungie have made here lately has convinced him to re-download Destiny. Dude, I feel like Bungie is taking me fishing. That's all I'm gonna say. I feel like this is that moment where they're like, listen, about to die, let's go fishing, son. Now, other common sense decisions Bungie has made here lately, it's even more shocking is, well, one of them being, that you now have an opportunity if you're a new player or a new light player, to completely skip the new light experience. You know, the experience that everyone hates so much and a lot of new light players actually get very much derailed. No, you could skip all of that now. Matter of fact, you just pick your subclass and you can call up your friend and you can jump right into the content. And considering Into the Line and everything around it is completely free, you'll be able to jump right into the content with them. Not only that, there's gonna be a chest available for everyone where when you pick up that armor, it will bring you to the soft cap of your level. Meaning you're not gonna be a detriment or a liability for your fire team and your friends. You are going to be leveled up enough to do enough damage and to contribute to that horde mode that you both are playing in. 
again, common sense decisions are being made here. Not only that, I've noticed in multiple live streams that everyone just seems almost like at ease. Like you're seeing the developers, you're getting FaceTime with them. They seem at ease, you know, talking about their craft, talking about what they've created. We saw like most recently this past week and the developers talking about when they created Whisper and even going back to as far as like what it was that drew that inspiration out of them. And that's really cool. That's not something that we would normally get from, you know, like corporate Bungie, which seems to be what we were getting for like the past couple of years. It was like we couldn't have that FaceTime with Bungie anymore. Yet in these streams, we're getting that human interaction there with Bungie developers. Something I feel like we haven't gotten since maybe for a second. And perhaps like, you know, a little bit after that, but COVID really shut things down and maybe that was the cause of it. But it's been a very long time since we've gotten that. Nah, nah. There's some comments surrounding the fact that this is all old rehash stuff that Bungie is bringing back to us. And that's fair. But at the same time, this is not stuff we weren't asking for. Look, I've been asking to get the Whisper mission and also the Zero Hour mission now for years. Those are great missions that people need to experience. And not only is Bungie bringing that back to us, but they've actually redone some things to it. So much so that they actually said that we're going to need to make new guides for it, which is incredible. The other things are the weapons. Yes, they're returning weapons, Midnight Coup and Blast Furnace and Luna's Howl and also Recluse and Mountaintop. But at the same time, these are things we've been asking for. So I know it is old stuff that's coming back to us, but these are truly community favorites. These are things that we want back in the game. I think the reality is, is that really sunsetting shouldn't have existed. That's the main thing. But if it did have to exist, this is how you bring these things back to us. Now, finally, because the hype is so high, Bungie is actually going to be doing a stream next Tuesday going over the final shape. They're going to be showing us final shape gameplay. And I know to some of you, this may not be that big of a surprise, but I was expecting this to occur later in the month. But them doing this right after doing three back-to-back -back live streams for Into the Light tells me that Bungie is not only getting very comfortable with us doing these live streams, but they're also excited to show us what they've been working on. And if there's something I can say about Bungie, I feel like over the past year, is that I just don't feel like they've been that excited to show us what they've been working on. You know, everything has been kind of very much scripted and or even pre-scripted in a lot of ways. And so them going back-to-back -back streams like this and then with the final shape gameplay reveal. This is going to have to be something extremely impressive to continue the hype that has already been generated from Into the Light. Now, before we jump up and celebrate success, I'm about to calm down, okay? We, we haven't even seen what Into the Light is going to be or at least experience it yet, right? We still need to play it. It could be literally the best game mode ever, that being Onslaught, or the worst game mode ever. At the same time, whatever they show us in the final shape reveal next week, hopefully it's good. Could be off. Could be terrible. Could just roll out and be like, all right, got a couple new weapons, got the same old, same old, which is exactly how we felt last year when we saw the Vine Dock. It felt like just another year of Destiny. Nothing felt like it was really changing, but something has changed within Bungie because these common sense decisions don't just happen naturally. If it did, it would have been happening up until this point. I don't know if it's maybe some leadership changes. I don't know if the developers themselves are having more of a grip on the future of Destiny. I don't know if it's just Bungie taking us fishing. This is just the last big expansion and that's going to be it. Regardless, I love the decisions that Bungie are making right now. I like that they are actually opening up communication between us and are listening to the community and they're running with that feedback. You know, they even mentioned the PvP maps and the people they brought in to go over those PvP maps. And they said that it was tough listening to the criticism of their maps, but they needed to hear it. And that is the kind of dialogue you want to hear from your developers. You don't want to hear an ego that just shuts everything down because once egos enters that conversation, then there's no good feedback from either side that is going to be met. And so the fact that they're bringing people in and getting some observations on that from an outside source, that's something that Bungie has not been doing for a very long time. Whether that's a fault of COVID or whatever else, who knows? But I'm glad that they're doing that. These are common sense decisions though, guys. I'm excited to see what we're going to be getting next Tuesday. I'm excited to try out the content. I'm excited to see what the final shape is going to bring to us. And hopefully this is going to be the best expansion ever. So guys, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Yes, Bungie is scaring the hell out of me. This could be our final year and maybe we're just going fishing. But for the time being, let's just enjoy it together. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.